I'm gonna teach you how to crack an egg with one hand. To crack the egg, you wanna do it on a flat surface rather than the side of a plate. This will decrease your chances of getting eggshell into the mix. When you're holding the egg, hold your index finger on one side and your middle finger on the other. And your thumb should be right in the center. Then you'll just spread your fingers apart and it should open up the egg. Ready? Ha ha! Go test it out, little chef. If you wanna learn more, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. How do I keep my herbs fresh? I just got these from the store. I'll just take off the tag and cut about an inch from the bottom. Put them in a cup of water. Parsley's good to go. Then I'll do the same thing with my cilantro. This parsley is looking a little droopy, but because we put it in water, it'll crisp right back up. And I'll put my parsley and cilantro just like this into the fridge. Now, green onions are my favorite because they'll continue to grow. Just put them in a cup of water. I'll just keep these right by the windowsill. And whenever you need green onions, cut a little off and they'll literally grow back overnight. If you wanna learn more, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. Bye little chef. Do you know what this little beak is for at the top of a potato peeler? It's to get out any bad spots on a potato. Just press a little beak around the bad spot, do a little circular cut around it, and it'll pop right out. It's that simple. If you wanna learn more, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. How to properly zest a lemon. We are gonna be eating the zest, so we're gonna to wanna to clean this. The peel of this lemon is nice, bright, and yellow, and very fragrant. Right below the peel, we have something called the pith. The pith is very bitter and we don't want to include that in our drink or the recipe that we're cooking. Use a peeler or a zester and you're going to lightly press down to peel it. So I have barely any of that pith. I just want the peel. If you peel it correctly, you should be seeing the pith here. If it looks something like this and you can see the flesh of the lemon, you're pushing way too hard. If you want to learn more tricks like this, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. Stop buying salad dressing. Let's make our own. The ratio is so simple. Three parts oil. You can use any kind of oil depending on what kind of dressing you're making. You could use canola oil, vegetable oil, or sesame oil if you're doing an Asian dressing. I'm doing a simple Italian dressing, so I'm gonna use olive oil. Three parts oil to one part acid. I used balsamic vinegar here, but you could use any kind of vinegar or citrus such as grapefruit, lemon, or lime. So that's your base to a vinaigrette. Now this is where you can get creative. Garlic, shallot, fresh herbs, dried herbs, but of course you need salt and pepper. Salt. I'll just put a little garlic powder in mine. Vinegars can be pretty harsh, so I like to add a touch of sweetness in the form of honey, agave, or sugar. Just a little bit. We're not trying to make this sweet, we're just trying to balance the flavors. Three parts oil, one part acid, seasonings, and a touch of sweetness. If you want to learn more, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. How to segment an orange. We'll take off both sides, about an eighth of an inch in, or until you can start to see the flesh. The orange part is the peel, and the white is called the pith. The pith can be very bitter, so we're gonna cut that off. Take your knife and remove the pith from the flesh. Try to stay as close to the pith as possible. You don't want a lot of waste. Now we have our bald orange. You can see that it's naturally segmented by this little thin membrane. We wanna cut on the inside of both of these membranes. Then you can do it to the whole orange. After you're done segmenting it, you can flip the membrane like little pages of a book. <laughs> there you go, segmented orange. If you wanna learn more, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. How to prevent your potatoes from browning. Potatoes tend to oxidize really fast and they'll turn brown, making your mashed potatoes look disgusting. To prevent this browning, we're just gonna soak them in water. Just keep them in the water until you're ready to use them. If you wanna learn more, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. How to work with ginger. Now I know a lot of people get it in the tube, However, there's a lot of preservatives in this and it changes the flavor. Um, I'm begging you, please just try some fresh ginger. The easiest way to peel this is with this. With a spoon, you can really get into all of those creases. Here's my little knob of ginger. Let's pretend this little baby grater is a microplane. I seem to have misplaced mine. So you just take the ginger and microplane it and it'll turn it almost into like a paste. Don't forget to check the back side of the microplane to get all the ginger off. And there you have it, ginger paste that tastes 100 times better than the stuff in the tube. If you wanna learn more, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. How to pickle anything your little chef heart desires. I'll show you how to make a basic pickling liquid. It's so easy. About a cup of white vinegar, a tablespoon of salt, and a tablespoon of sugar. Pop this into the microwave until it's boiling. In the meantime, find out what you wanna pickle. I'm gonna do jalapenos and a red onion. I'm gonna do a julienne cut of this onion, so I'm just gonna follow those natural lines. I'll put these into two separate bowls. Make sure the salt and sugar is completely dissolved. And pour that hot pickling liquid right over your veggies. 
Make sure your veggies are completely covered with that pickling liquid. Pop a lid on them, throw them in the fridge, and use them whenever you want. If you want to learn more, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. How to cut a jalapeno if you can't handle the heat. So the seeds and the white membrane of the jalapeno is going to be the spiciest part of the pepper. So we'll just use the outside by cutting around the seeds and the membrane. That's where all the spice is. And this part is pretty mild, but you'll still get that flavor. If you want to learn more, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. Brown sugar is the healthiest sugar that you can eat. Uh, no. Wrong. Brown sugar is just made with regular sugar and molasses. Let me show you. Sugar goes into a bowl, touch of molasses, just mix it up and you have brown sugar. If you want a darker brown sugar, put more molasses. If you want a lighter brown sugar, put less molasses. If you want to learn more tricks like this, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. How to make regular sugar into powdered sugar. Let me show you how to do it. All you need is regular sugar and some cornstarch and a spice grinder. Put your sugar in with a touch of cornstarch. The cornstarch is going to attract the moisture so this doesn't clump up. Check it out though. There you go, powdered sugar. If you want to learn more tricks like this, check the link in my bio for cooking classes.